viewpoint. Mr. Ash has given us the nod of approval, joining us uh, once again regale the folks in Bowdoin County with uh, whatever you're going to regale with them with. I'm not sure what you have in mind this morning, Mrs. Busby. <laughs> I just like to keep you guessing. <laughs> well, anyway, we will so we, uh, have some three uh, great guests this morning, and so we want to uh, get to them rather quickly. Uh, we always try to start viewpoint with kudos, and uh, I said to Judy a few minutes ago, I said, you know, I'm not sure I have a real kudo something real substantive and she said well just uh, uh, kudos to everybody who survived new year's uh might be appropriate somewhat uh, s to some more than others i might add <clears throat> well there was a time bill you know when we both used to be a lot of fun right <laughs> but that's all in the past now <laughs> i can't imagine what you have or do it do it all make reference yeah. to no I, it's rumors I no it's all rumors all. i've heard yeah well on a serious note um <laughs> I noted that uh, we have some of our youth, uh, young folks in the wrestling program, that are uh, making some achievements uh, as they move along the winter program. And uh, it occurred to me, in thinking about that, that uh, they're not going to progress if they don't have some adult uh, uh, coaches and, and those who uh, help with that program. So uh, those folks, uh, those uh, young folks out there who uh, uh, take the time to work with young wrestlers, uh, uh, Alex Dawson comes to mind. He's the warden of the uh, Golden Correctional Center, and he's been uh, a volunteer in that program for a long time. He was, I guess he was quite a wrestler in school. So I think we can give them a kudo appropriately. Well, and to all the others of, of his ilk, you know, mm -hmm. I think of when we had Stephen Ferris here. He mm -hmm. was the one who kind of got together the uh, Lincoln Youth Football mm -hmm. that plays at Eaton, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Thank God for people who who care enough about kids to go the the last mile to help yeah. them find things that are worthwhile to do. And speaking of that, that's going to be our subject matter this morning. As a matter of fact, yes, we're going to do that right away. I, I have an announcement to make. Um, um, Judith, we've uh, added to our roving reporters. We have, gentlemen, some roving reporters out there in the World Wide Web. Uh, we have uh, Lois Harvey up in, uh, across Wisconsin. She gave us a nice report, which we forgot to bring on the air, uh, about the migration of the yellowtail butterflies from Wisconsin down to Costa Rica. Uh, we haven't heard from Lou Snutt. He's one of our uh, roving reporters down in uh, Arizona. Uh, Artie Skirbelhorn, is, uh, new. he called in, and he's going to report from Appalachia. And he'll be going to South Carolina to report on the uh, redneck voting down there. Uh, oh, and uh, speaking of migration, um, uh, our friend Fred Nittany from Starved Rock, Illinois, uh, who has a good friend here that we all know. Uh, well, of course, Ralph and Shirley Helton have good friends all over, right? But they're particularly oh, gosh, good yes. friends of uh, Fred Nittany. And he's reporting that the, uh, the influx of eagles at Starved Rock is very significant. So we've got our rovering reporters out there, and uh, if we have anybody else that uh, wants to volunteer to be a reporter, all they have to do is get in touch with Jim Ash or uh, Mrs. Busby. Uh, I'll be at Old Joe's with Father Lively, so <laughs> I'll be in communicado. So. <laughs> I what? told your father not to tell him anything because he's just uh, blurting. I shouldn't have said that I was there. <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> Having my famous cup of Starbucks. Is there Starbucks there? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they do. Because oh, okay. <laughs> well, a lot of people go. Why else would you go if it oh, weren't okay, for Starbucks? Absolutely. That's right. Yeah, for well, well, let's get to the serious matter. Uh, we have some guests here with uh, a serious cause. Judith Gay, why don't you introduce our guest? This well, morning. yes. Uh, with us are Father Lively. And Father Lively is from Holy Family Parish here in Lincoln and serves all of the parishes in Logan County. The Catholic parishes. Correct. Yes, mm -hmm. which keeps you busy, doesn't it? Very. Yes. You're not bored then. No, I'm not bored. In at addition all. to your to your duties in the service. That's correct. And yes. that's why I've not been able to get into gold to old Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> He's too busy. <laughs> and uh, the principal at Carroll Catholic School is Mr. Welch. And he uh, is going to be talking along with Wayne Cox. There are parishioners there. And uh, Wayne, I think, has children at Carroll, don't you, Wayne? Uh, no, they're, they're graduated. They're now in high school. But my son and daughter both graduated from Carroll Catholic. From Carroll Catholic. And uh, lots of my friends' kids 
graduated from Carroll. It's a, it's an institution to be proud of. Um, and Mark, now how long have you been there? And no, I said Mark, David. and it's David. David. Right. Yeah. Mark's, Mark's a doctor the, uh, in the family. Mark's another one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> another yeah. Welsh. That's right. Uh, this is my first year as principal. Is it? Yes. How do you like that? I love it. I love it. It's going very well, better than uh, than I had expected, better than I had hoped, so uh, I no complaints. Well, another commonality in education these days, whether you're a private school or a public school, is money. And you've come up with a really good idea that's twofold. So let's talk about Mardi Gras. Who would like to open? Well, I'll open. Do um, <clears throat> We, uh, of course, we're always looking for creative ways to bring our community together, you know, our, our not only our Catholic community, but also the larger community uh, for social times, for to renew friendships, and uh, to also enjoy one another's company. We, we try to do that as well uh, to also uh, bring awareness to what we're doing at, at Carroll School, um, to, to be able to educate and form our children. Uh, to give them outstanding education, but also faith formation. That really is, is our dual goal that we have in Catholic education. So really our focus in coming together for our Mardi Gras party is to, is to bring the adults together for a social time, but also uh, we, we also need to be able to raise funds to be able to support you know, our, our, the mission of Catholic education. Uh, <clears throat> private education uh, is, is all uh, funded, you know, privately. Obviously, we have very little uh, to no government support for for uh, in private education, and so we have to be able to financially uh, come up with creative ways to be able to um, keep our school going. So Mardi Gras is a way to to, to be able to raise funds for our school. Uh, for our young people, but also it's a way for us to be able to uh, kind of get together as adults and enjoy one another's friendship and company. So that's kind of our, our purpose in, in our Mardi Gras party coming up in February. Private education must must be a challenge. It's it's not cheap to have the nice big building that you have and of course it has to be staffed with principal and teachers and all the other people and uh, it's got to just be an ongoing challenge it is an ongoing challenge absolutely you know. i was just sitting here thinking judy and gentlemen back in the depression when i was a kid in, in central school in grade school i guess we had the forerunner to the mardi gras we used to have jitney suppers and and the folks would come and parents would contribute their food and the folks would come and pay a nickel for a slice of pie or a piece of cake or that cheap, huh? Nickel. Yeah, really, a jitney. <laughs> yeah. it, well, we're uh, talking yeah, a couple was, years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, jitney. Okay. That's what we'll they call it. Nickel. <laughs> that must have been in the early to mid thirties. And huh. uh, that's that was a, a so-called fundraiser. Is that at all like a Ludafisk supper? Oh, we didn't have anything so esoteric as Ludafisk. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that at all. No. Well, there aren't enough Norwegians down here to have one. No, no. <laughs> Not at uh, all. David, your, uh, um, your budget for um, uh, Carol has got to be a, a, a real significant uh, factor, and um, it must be an ongoing problem daily to, to wrestle with trying to work with expenses versus income, mm -hmm. and uh, besides, besides uh, your duties as a school administrator. Right. Right. Um, what what constitute the most of your time trying to administrate the school, uh, uh, get that, see that that's going and, and uh, the way that it should be, and it's certainly very successful, or worrying about the budget? Yeah, or, or is it concomitant? Yeah, I think they go hand in hand. I don't think you can separate one from the other. <clears throat> um, and I don't know if, you know, daily if it's a 50 50 split, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's, it's ongoing. You, you certainly have to deal with. Uh, you know the day-to-day -day issues of the building. You know, mm -hmm. getting substitutes or, or taking care of, you know, a, a daily uh, occurrence. But at the same time, you got to keep, you know, your focus out further out as far as our time horizon goes, and, and mm -hmm. think about where you want the school to go. And so, um, you know, it's that that combination of, of managing the building, but keeping in mind the vision of of where you want the school to be. So. Uh, you know, it, it keeps me busy, but, uh, you know, in the end, it's all worthwhile. Parents have to be very dedicated because, uh, uh, as, not, as opposed to a public school, uh, uh, there's a little matter of tuition involved there. Right. 
and that's uh, such as uh, uh, Zion School out there on uh, uh, West Lincoln. Um, must be difficult to administer a, a private school in today's times. It is. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. If difficult is, is the word. It's challenging, but it, it it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of people, like you said. It, you know, it's parents, it's the staff, uh, it's it's certainly the parish and, and the and the larger community. But and and as far as parents go, I mean, they're they're mm -hmm. real commitment dedicated. on their part. Isn't yeah, there yeah. is. There, there's there's uh -huh. commitment of money, um, but then also time. And and mm -hmm. I don't think there's a parent there that doesn't volunteer. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout the year at one time or another. And so I I really blessed with the parents that we have and, and the commitment they show. Well, they know what their youngsters are coming out of there with as, as they go into our high school system. They're coming out of with a doggone good elementary education mm -hmm. and they're, they're willing to pay up in order to help maintain that, which is a, a real dedication. Uh, Wayne, uh, you've been planning now. Are you a part of the planning committee for uh, uh, this uh, Mardi Gras? And uh, are you going to put on the funny hats and so forth? Or, uh, well, actually, we do have a um, prisoner uh, in our parish, Colleen Rote, and she'll be putting on the hat of the jester. Uh -huh. And she'll be uh, giving out different prizes throughout the evening, kind of keep the keep it going, be a nice icebreaker. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, well, everybody will be wearing beads. We'll all be having fun. It, it's it's going to be really good. We've got uh, the Patty Diener Band is going to be playing. So she does beautiful voice. Um, she does a lot of jazz, blues. We're going to mix in some New Orleans style music, traditional music with that. Um, we have Ted Lowry from uh, Ted's Garage. He will be doing all the catering. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe he's taking over the catering for the Elks. Mm -hmm. um, and he's doing a New Orleans style cuisine for the entire evening. Um, of course, cash bar, um, dancing. It's going to be fun. Well, and you're having it at a, at a nice place. Uh, that's a good place for for you to go for a, for a good dinner and a good time. Uh, now, what's the date of your event? We're we're putting it, we're having it February 18th, um, and it'll be from 6 p.m. until 12. Generally, Mardi Gras means Fat Tuesday, <laughs> and so normally it would be on Tuesday, but. Uh, we live in central Illinois, and on Tuesday, no one wants to go out and... <laughs> so we're going to have it on Saturday before the <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> I just move it at that. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Called license. <laughs> you know, authors have literary license, so promoters can have a license of some... Promoting license of some sort. Now, what, uh, what else? Now, you've talked about uh, there will be the uh, New Orleans-style food available, and... Uh, the beads and the dancing and the music and all, and uh, and what else will you be doing that evening? Well, um, like I, as I said, we, we're going to have the prizes. Um, the court gesture will be going around uh, giving out beads for different. Mm -hmm. There'll be different awards. We're going to have some silly awards, um, kind of some icebreakers in the beginning. Um, I really, it's just going to be fun. It's good. It's just going to be a time. One of the things that our committee decided to do. We wanted to put the fun back in fundraiser. So when people buy their tickets or if they sponsor, it's not going to be one of those fundraisers where you <clears throat> walk in and you're going to be nickeled and dined. Literally, when you buy your ticket, that's it. When you get to the party, there will be no more asking for money or, or anything like that. And we really want this, as Father had said, we really want this to be a community event where we just get together and have a good time because that's really what it's about. It's about having a good time um, and raising some money to support the school. Mm -hmm. uh, the theme of our Mardi Gras this year is going to be Raise the Roof um, because all of our funds are going to help offset the costs for the new roof for the school. So that's why we're calling it Raise the Roof. Oh, gracious. That, you, you know, that's got to be a big undertaking uh, to re-roof Carroll Catholic School. That's a pretty good-sized building. It is, and <clears throat> unfortunately, being a roof, no one actually will will see it, and so it's one yeah. of those that money goes to something. You, it's you, like you cleaning the oven at home, right. you know. Nobody knows. <laughs> oh, do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Found out things here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Father, uh, with your duties as pastor of, of Holy Family, uh, not all parishes uh, have th a, an elementary school that they need to worry with. That uh, that's an extra responsibility on the part of you're the you are the rector of of the uh, Holy Family Parish, and the outlying churches. Um, takes a little extra time for you as far as uh, uh, away from the religious aspect of of your work. You're getting to the secular part of being a, an educator as well. Um, 
much time on that as you, or do you turn it over a good looking you know, man, like man like Dave Wilson and, and say, uh, run with it, don't get in trouble? Yeah, there you go, absolutely. No, I, I, I am blessed to Larry and Tom will take care of that. With, with Mr. Welsh, but also a great faculty and staff and uh -huh. great administrative support uh, in the parish office, and that really is key to to uh, having an effective Catholic grade school. Of course, I do have some responsibilities, you know, with oversight and working with Mr. Welsh, you know, uh, pastor kind of serves, you know, as a superintendent, you know, you kind of have a, that overseeing ability, but really um, there's no way that I could do all of that. And so having key people, um, you know, uh, in, in different uh, leadership uh, avenues is, is really important. We have a great education commission of mm -hmm. parents and parishioners, as well as people like, like Wayne and uh, Melissa and uh, the other fundraising committees. So you have to have, uh, you know, a, a people surrounding you to, to be able to, 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 to make it work effectively. And really, um, mm -hmm. there's no way that even the leadership could, could do what, what, what we accomplish without um, the backing of our parishioners. You know? oh, right. We have to have parents, grandparents. Mm -hmm. We have to have parishioners, you know, that maybe sent their kids there years ago. We have to have people that maybe have never sent their kids there. It takes all of us together. Mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to be able to, uh, to, to provide this Catholic education for our children. You know, it's education and faith formation. When you think about the, the privilege that we have in the United States to be able to shape and form our children in the ways of the gospel, uh, that's a great privilege mm -hmm. that a lot of people in other countries would only dream of having. Yeah. And yet we can we can do it here in Lincoln, not only at Carroll School, but but Zion Lutheran's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so to be able to do that is a great privilege and a great honor. And then we have yeah. some some among us who raise their ugly heads and uh, try in the public schools to make less and less of that type of atmosphere. You know, we can't say one nation under God, according to some. We certainly can't do this and we mustn't do that. And uh, if you're going to ha have that and have it freely, it has to be in a private school. It does, absolutely. That's just the way our Constitution is, is, is set up. And so, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why we're blessed to have a, a Catholic education, you know, so that we can talk about God. And, you know, uh, the kids can be uh, shaped and formed in, in the gospel values from the moment that they step in that school building. Mm -hmm. And it, it happens not only in the classroom, but it also happens on the basketball court, on the volleyball court. I mean, our coaches, you know, take that gospel message to the kids and help them, you know, make good decisions, whether it be in the classroom or on the basketball court mm -hmm. or on the baseball diamond. So it's, it's, it's across the board, you know. Uh, well, we're not all making it young Tim Tebow's, but if we can give them a basic core with which to build, Absolutely. that will work. Now, all churches have to have somebody help out in the background. Uh, they can't, oh, I just can't go to church on Sunday and then uh, forget it for the next uh, six or seven days. Uh, you've got to have people in the parishes uh, all over in every church, uh, like Wayne, who will come in here and help uh, on, on projects, right. whatever the project may be. Absolutely. So it's very important to have uh, somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wayne, um, are you you have a, a large committee that you're working with as you're uh, on a, uh, uh, the wing of Father Lively here? Well, we do have um, our currently on our committee is, my, of course, myself and my wife is Dr. Melissa Cox and Dr. Kristen Greenmorrow, who's also a parishioner in the Holy Family Parish, uh, Kay Armbruster, um, Doug and Regina Board that uh, are part of Custom Cleaners, mm -hmm. and uh, then Steve Kraft, and Steve works at the State Bank in the Loan Department. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, his wife, Katie. We have a, 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 good, a good committee, and mm -hmm. we kind of just put our heads together and uh, came up with this idea. We just thought, what can we do to raise money for the school, but not, you know, something to be fun. And then we realized, why not Mardi Gras? It's a Catholic holiday anyway, so let's 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 play on that. Let's let's use a Catholic holiday and have a Catholic fundraiser. Well, that means we can't go. No, no, all are welcome. <laughs> you know, he Bill, just said it if, twice. It was a Catholic holiday. Uh, you know, we're out. If <laughs> you go down to New Orleans, I can guarantee that you'll see a lot of non-Catholics down there. <laughs> you better hope they are. <laughs> you, you better hope most of them are non-Catholics. The way some of them operate down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's a wide open town. Now, do you still have a preschool at Carroll as well? 
Right, yeah, we have a, a, a really strong preschool and pre-K program, three-year-old and four-year-old program that uh, um, tend to be at capacity or nearly at capacity. This year we had um, a pretty good-sized waiting list even for pre-K. Really? So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Brittany Faith's been our pre-K teacher now for five years and, and just does an excellent job. And, and I think that shows with the, the response we have from the community. As I think back over the years, uh, your staff has traditionally been very loyal and I'm sure you can think David to when you were a student Mm -hmm. and remember that those teachers the second grade teacher remained the second grade teacher for lots of years she wasn't looking to move out to whichever school Mm -hmm. right yeah there's a lot of loyalty there sure is and good teachers just just wonderful people right right I as far as loyalty uh, you know, Ann Stolzenberg and John Coca have been there. This is for both of them their 39th year <laughs> at, at Carroll. I, mean, I had them as as teachers when I was there as a student. That's so okay. yeah, that's yeah. that's loyalty. Sure, you bet, you bet, and that counts. Yeah, well, and Pat Morrow was the school secretary for oh about was it 89 or 100 years? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Good thing she's done, and uh, when well, she may hear this on the WWW here, I've, I've talked to her about that. Her being that long, and she yeah. might not like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's a sweet thing. Yeah. <laughs> the um, the staff. How many do you have? How many teachers do you have, David? Well, you put me on the spot here now. The numbers. Um, we have within fifty. Within <laughs> uh, seven right now. Uh-huh. We've got a couple combined classes: third and fourth, uh-huh. and seventh, eighth. Mm-hmm. We have combined. But, uh, you know, it used to always be that way. Way back, that was before my time but they always used to have bigger combinations than that you know first through eighth grade would be a combined school room sure. so that has proven really over the years to be successful mm-hmm. did, did anybody ever when you when you came to the point where where there had to be consolidation did anybody get nervous about it and think oh my gosh I don't want my third grader working with the fourth graders or vice versa I'm sure there was some nervousness, but I don't think anybody, um, you know, took it to an extreme where they didn't, you know, either either send their child or, or, or pull them out for that reason. And I think we've, um, you know, the teachers are, have been dedicated to it, the ones that are teaching those different combined grades and, and are doing a great job with it. Um, and so I think, you know, we've shown that it can work. And, oh, sure. and, and I, I think Zion's in the same situation with a number of their grade levels, uh, and it's working there. So, you know, it's something if you if you approach it the right way, you can make it work. You bet. We're going to take a couple of minutes for a commercial break, and when we get back, gentlemen, uh, we want to emphasize uh, that this is a community-wide project, and we want to talk about that just uh, right after our commercial break.